Client Hyper-V is a virtualization manager. or It's the same as Hyper-V in Windows Server 2012 or the Hyper-V server itself, which happens to be free just in case you wanted to know and set up a Linux um, network yourself. Um, but Client Hyper-V is actually run from the desktop. It is a hosted hypervisor. Um, that means that your operating systems that you load up as virtual machines are guest there. Um, that means it's a hypervisor t type 2. <laughs> That's a little bit too technical probably for this, vid for this video though. Um, client Hyper-V uh, requires a 64-bit processor although the guest op operating systems you load up in virtual machines may be 32 or 64 bit. I mean it requires that sh your computer have SLAT which is second address, um, second level address translation. Um, you can run core info which is if you go to Windows Sys, um, TechNet over here, Sys Internals, there's the down, download for Core Info. You can run this. It will tell you if your machine is, you run it with the V option, don't, don't bo only virtualization related features, and it will tell you whether or not your machine is, is capable of running cl um, Client Hyper-V. Client Hyper-V also requires uh, the minimum of 4 gigabytes of memory. Um, if you're going to, the recommendation is if you're going to run more than 5 um, virtual machine, machines at a time that you do install additional memory. However, like I said, these links here are on the uh, resource um, slide at the end of the video. I highly suggest you read up on it um, before you you um, attempt to enable Client Hyper-V. Now to enable the Client Hyper-V what you would do is you would go over, you do hold down your Windows key, hit X and it brings up your your mini menu here. Go to um, Control Panel, go in here and search for Windows Features and here we have Turn Windows Features On and Off Yes, um, it is populating the dialog box here. Okay, and if you can see, I have Hyper-V already enabled, already checked. So it won't be when you first, it, you have to go in here and enable it. And it automatically checks them all. You go over here and say, okay, and we're good there. Now you're also going to have to check your BIOS. Now to check your BIOS, I'm not going to be able to show you this on the video. And also it also depends on your own computer. Now my computer, they in the instructions it said to hit F2 in the middle of a reboot. Well on my computer you're supposed to hit F10. However because I have Windows 8 Pro loaded up, then I have to hit Escape. Okay, so it all depends on your operating system and your computer as to how you're going to get into your BIOS. But once you get into your BIOS, you're going to want to look for virtualization and you want that enabled and you're going to want to look for DEP and that's going to be under your security tab and then after you enable those you turn your machine off after it finishes that reboot then you turn it off and then leave it off for like 30 seconds a minute and then turn it back on you can't just reboot after that because it won't change the BIOS to change the BIOS you have to turn the machine off Okay, now that we have Hyper-V, Client Hyper-V rather, installed on our desktop with Windows 8 Pro, um, you come down here to your left corner, get your start menus up, and you click right here on the Hyper-V Manager. Um, please, here's your Hyper-V Manager, and as you can see, I already have um, two virtual machines loaded up there. I, I had exported them from the lab at school, on campus and I loaded them up here on my computer. Here you can start a new virtual machine, you can import virtual machines, you can go in here to the settings, you can add a virtual switch, you can change your storage disk. It's very, very cool actually. 
I'm still learning about it. I read a lot, and I also I also look at a lot of YouTube videos. So, I it's very fun. I like being a um, like being able to run different operating systems on my computer. Um, for developers, this is great. They don't have to spend a whole lot of money into different uh, different computers and servers and whatever to to run all the different operating systems. You can also any virtual machine that you um, create here, you can export to a Hyper-V um, on a Windows server. You can also teach yourself um, basically how to be a network manager through Hyper-V. You can set up all different types of networks. You can also teach yourself PowerShell um, because um, this is fully capable of running PowerShell as command. So uh, as well, you can do everything you can through the GUI, through PowerShell commands. So that's it for our client Hyper-V. I hope you and you learn learn it, use it, enjoy it. And now we're going to move on to the app I, I really like on um, Windows 8 from the Windows 8 Store is ArcGIS. Okay, we're going to create an account for ArcGIS Online, which is a, it's not quite open source, but you can have a free public um, account. It's a little bit limited. However, any maps you upload, you'll be able to access in the ArcGIS app that you get from the Windows Store. So the first thing really, though, you need to do is come here to the rgis.com slash home page, and you want to set up your own account, uh, a new account. You go down here, get a free RGIS online account. So you sign up now, and you can either get a 30-day free trial for the subscription or a public account. If you already do tr GIS training with Esri through your university, you can register that account or you can create a public account, which is what I'm going to do here. Okay, I've created my account. Uh, my username is the Geeky Lizard. My name is up there. I can edit my profile if I'd like. Um, let's go to the gallery and you can see there are all kinds of maps you can look at. If you want to look at the highest rated, give you some ideas. True geography of the London Underground. Hmm. U.S. weather warnings. Okay. Arizona solar installations. Um, look at that. Over a thousand. Learn how to make a web map. Create your own web map. Now, I want you to take you over here to my content. This is where you make your own map. There will be videos coming up on this later. Going back, groups, you can join groups, groups owned by me. I can create a group. I can send out new membership um, requests, etc. Now I want to take you to the Windows Store. We come down here to our Start menu. Actually, I've already loaded it up. So I'm just going to come over here. Here's the ArcGIS app that you find at the Windows Store. Current weather, Hurricane Sandy, there's scientific maps, offshore wind is one of my favorites. Come in here and it gives you, um, you can open the map, let's open the map, it gives you a description of it and there we have it. You can use your wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. So we zoom out a little bit and we can see this map covers basically most of the East Coast. Over here, these are the layers that are on. You can see that they're on. If you turn off a layer, then you see it turns it off in here. This is the developable, uh, de <laughs> excuse me, developable potential for um, offshore. Now this is the legend and you can this is everything that you set when you're creating your map. There's political maps, favorites. I've already added that as my favorite. If you come down here to your bottom right corner, you can. This brings up your char um, charms. Now, those charms are applicable for this app, okay? As well as when you're in regular Windows 8, those same charms are programmed into every app that you can get from the Windows Store too. So, if I want to search for um, hurricanes and uh, it comes up with a few ideas if I want to search for solar power 
um, it comes up with those ideas. So we come over here and let's let's go to settings. Okay. Now you can set your settings. Um, I have mine. I had to change it. It was automatically set for meters. I changed it for feet and miles and I'm using degrees, minutes, and seconds instead of decimal degrees or, or the military grid. Here it tells you about the map, the ArcGIS for Windows Store and it also gives you a chance to give feedback. Terms of use will take you to this big long conglomeration of legal jargon. Here's a talking map. Let's open that one. Of endangered languages. Isn't that interesting? One feature found here. And it gives you information over here. Now this is very nice. If we click on this feature, it gives you information on that. There's another thing you can look for these maps as inf um, ideas to make your own maps. Also, you can measure here. If you just right click, it brings up the bottom menu. You can go to the base map, or add a base map. You can set your start extent, and go to your location. And it's taken me to my location. And there I am. It tell you can see the permissions the location is on. I can turn that off there and to show notifications. Okay. You can rate and review it. It takes you to the store and you can write a review there. And to close it, as always, you can just grab and go that way. Okay, now I'm going to show you um, two of my favorite reader apps that I use in Windows 8. And as you know now, then you go down here to the left corner and you bring up your start menu. Here's the Wall Street Journal app right here. And you can read, these are the little blurbs you see on the paper. Some of the, if you see the key, that means it's locked, you need a subscription. But as you can see, there's a, you know, you still get the, the summary of the article and you get a load of information anyway. Um, you know, there's, there's other, these two articles are not locked. You can click on them and read the entire article. Okay, you click this arrow to go back and to close the app you can go up here to the top and get your hand and then slide it down and it brings you back to start menu, your tiles. Um, here's the Economist. It's another one I use and it's also a reader that um, has locked articles that if you're a subscriber you're able to read. To get these onto your computer you go to the store. Oh, here's a new one, the Weather Channel. Okay, now to install an app, you would, if you hold down your Windows key and hit Q, uh, it brings up the search tile. Another way to get that is to go down here and bring to the right bottom corner to bring up your charms, and you also can get your search that way. So if I wanted to search for Wall Street Journal, I would do it like that. Then there it is, it comes up. I've already got it installed um, you can, and it tells you about it. It's free. I own this app. I can rate it.